Well, hey there, and welcome to a special Home Alive today. We're talking all about Game Jams, and we're going to announce the theme. So great to see you all here in that chat. What is up? Too many people to mention today, but great to see the turnout. We're super excited about this. We have some great guests for you. We have Olivia, co-founder here at Home of Games, and we have our sponsor, Google, for this Game Jam to come on and say a few bits. So... Without further delay, I am going to welcome on a co-founder here at Homer Games, uh, Olivier, and he's going to say a few words about Homer and everything that we've got going on here. So I'll hand over to you now, Olivier. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Kevin, for the uh, the introduction and also uh, organizing this uh, fifth uh, jam, Homer jam now, uh, this uh, kind of a mythic... Uh, rendezvous that we are that we have started a couple of years ago now um, so I'll, I'll take two minutes of uh, of your time to uh, first uh, wish you good luck in this uh, fifth jam organized with uh, with Aurelie and Google uh, we're very very excited um, I think the market intelligence team as well as the whole OMA team has uh, organized a nice nice event and a nice theme for all of you guys um, I'll make it very quick but uh, uh, my name is Olivier. I'm, uh, I'm, I co-created the company uh, four years ago. Uh, Oma now, as you know, uh, we're not uh, only a market, um, let's say, a publisher and a developer in hyper casual. Uh, we've done that since four years, but uh, we've uh, quickly expanded, uh, starting last year, uh, into other game categories. Uh, so we would be very, very excited if you guys are entering into other categories than uh, hyper casual, hybrid casual. As you know, we've we've launched last year this Idle Arcade uh, uh, new game category that we are getting uh, very, very excited about, uh, and and more recently uh, uh, blockchain gaming and, and casual games. So yeah, uh, we're now uh, 140 uh, employees, uh, more than 25 nationalities, different nationalities. Uh, spread uh, everywhere across the world. We're very lucky to have this uh, diversity of, of, of talent um, uh, inside, the, inside the company. And, and yeah, as I explained at the beginning of the introduction, this is the fifth jam already. Um, the first one was with uh, Nerf. Uh, and then we had uh, a few others with Facebook and recent, more recently Sorer. And, and this time, yep, we, we were lucky to uh, align with uh, Aurelie's team and Google to organize this fifth one, where we believe this one will be definitely focused on uh, even more game uh, quality. Uh, you'll see the team has brought on the table uh, tools that will be helping potentially you to develop uh, games faster and potentially uh, better. And in order to achieve the, uh, the very nice uh, prizes uh, that uh, OMA is, is, is ready to put on the table for uh, participants and also uh, winners uh, of, the, of the jam. Um, so, yeah, um, I really want to welcome all of you again. I want to thank the whole uh, Google and OMA team for organizing uh, uh, this event, especially uh, Kevin, Valentin and Aurelie. Uh, and 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 obviously, uh, uh, good luck, everyone. Really excited to uh, to see all your projects and to discuss with you uh, along with those few weeks inside the uh, Discord, different Discord channels. So yeah, uh, thank you, everyone. Good luck, and uh, I'll be passing the mic back to uh, to Kevin. Bye bye. So thanks, Olivier. Much appreciated there, boss. Um, so as you can see there. Uh, growing company number five jam here at Homer. We're super excited about that. And of, as Olivia mentioned, we have Google as a sponsor this time around. So I'm just going to have a quick wave to Aurelie, and she's got some uh, a presentation for us, some few slides before we get going. Um, but let's just welcome on Aurelie to the chat. I'm just going to pass over to her now, and uh, I'll be back in a bit. Hi, Kevin. Hi, everyone. So my name is Aurélie and I am leading the mobile gaming vertical for Google Friends here in Paris. We partner with best-in-class publishers and studios such as Homa Games and help them grow. I am very happy to introduce the cross-functional Google team, which will be supporting this jam. We have a mix of engineers and project managers from our Google Ads, AdMob and Cloud teams here to help. 
So at Google, we, ha we have a very long history of supporting developers. Our annual developer conference, Google I.O., happened last week. It brings together developers for talks, hands-on learnings with Google experts, and a first look at Google's latest developer products. Google is also uh, very well known to promote an inclusive culture and encourage innovation. Our products are built for everyone. It is good for the users and good for the business. It enables you to tap into a wider audience and also the lack of inclusion damages trust. Built for everyone, by everyone, there are numerous Google developer communities around the world. You can find out and join your local communities through our Google I.O. website. So we will be supporting this jam uh, through three masterclasses centered on building apps, user acquisition and monetization. We will guide you through the best of Firebase and Google solutions to grow mobile games. Firebase is at the core of our app strategy. It is a development platform that helps you build and grow apps and games. It focuses on three steps of the app's journey, build, release, and monitor and engage. And now it is time to uh, wish you a very good luck. And uh, I hand it back over to you, Kevin. Thank you very much. So, yes, yeah, super, super thrilled you could join us with that. Those masterclasses will be coming your way. We'll give you some more details about that shortly. But thanks, Aurelie. We really appreciate that. And we couldn't have asked for a better partner. Um, so let's get going. In case you missed it already, at the bottom of your screen there, uh, you can see there is a timer that is ticking down until 11.59 tonight. So the registration is still open and we encourage you to come on over and register for the jam and it will shut off tonight and that's it. So if you want to look, check out those masterclasses and we'll show you a little bit of what we've got here at Team Homer uh, for you, you definitely want to go over to the jam.homergames.com website. There will be a link in that chat and in the description of this video. So be sure to get your name in and registered before we shut this off to get all that free content. And of course, a chance of winning some amazing prizes of which is on your screen right now, our main prize, which is the 50-50 rev share deal. Um, there's a minimum of 200K bonus for that signing that deal as well. And in all fairness, this is pretty unheard of within the industry. It's a super fantastic deal and pretty much second to none in terms of major prizes. But we did not want to stop at that main prize. And for you, we have six other ways to win within this jam. We're going to be rewarding some game ideas this time around. So even if you don't win the super duper big one, if you've got a super great idea, we are going to be rewarding you and you have a chance of winning two and a half thousand dollars and there is multiple chances to win. So you could submit three games if you wanted. And if all the ideas are absolute knockout, you've got a chance of winning that two and a half thousand. So if you're creating games anyway, get yourself registered. This is a no brainer. You might as well get yourself registered, submit your prototypes throughout this month. And you've got a chance of winning just for your game idea. Now, next up, we've got the Homer Choice Awards. There, again, is multiple chances to win. And this is ranked by our publishing team for the overall quality of your game and some KPIs and the execution. So if you built a really great looking prototype, our publishing team will flag that up and you've got the chance of winning $5,000. Again, multiple chances to win on that one. So if you've produced two real stellar prototypes you're in with a chance now the other one there which is a huge jump in prize which is a 35,000 single win for the best cpi of the competition if you can hit below zero 15 cents on android you're in but we didn't want to stop there there are prizes to be won at every step of the process and of course we have the founders award now you just saw olivier on the chat there uh, introducing Homer, he is going to choose his favourite game submitted throughout the jam. So if there is ever a chance to catch the attention of the big chiefs here at Homer, as well as the publishing team and all the market intelligence experts, Olivier is going to come on and he's going to choose his game that he feels has got the most potential. So 
Perhaps it doesn't make some of the really fancy numbers, but if you're looking to produce a prototype, Olivier is going to choose. He's going to look at all of them. He doesn't, I don't think he quite realized that now, but he's got to look through all of them and he's going to choose his favorite. Um, and he's going to award you two and a half thousand dollars for the game that he feels has got most potential. Now, maybe you're a solo dev and you haven't got enough resources. At this point, the potential is exactly what we're looking for. Perhaps we put some resources into helping you build out your game and developing it further. So this alone is a really good opportunity for you. Certainly if you're stretched and maybe you're great at coding but your artwork's not so good, we can help. So we'll be looking at all of them and that is the Founders Award. The best overall metrics coming next is $25,000. You can see the numbers on your screen for the metrics you need to hit there. This is relatively standard. Um, so it, for those who've been around game jams before, you'll recognize these numbers. Certainly if you've been trying out with some prototypes before, you'll know these sort of numbers, but there is multiple chances to win. So if you make any of these numbers, um, perhaps your CPI is slightly higher than we'd like, but your playtime is off the charts. We will take all these KPIs into consideration and there's a whopping $25,000 for the winner there. Now, the last one is the one that I'm kind of excited about. It's a single winner here, but this is where we're going to go through all the games. Myself, the publishing team, and the market intelligent team are just going to pick out our favorite. That's the truth of it. Anything with exceptional quality, we're going to pick out the winner here. So even if, like I said before, you don't make some of those magic unicorn numbers, we're going to pick out for and reward you for the one that we like the most. And I'm sure there's going to be a fight, but we'll we'll figure that out here at Homer. But we will be awarding that of our favorite game for exceptional quality and overall build and all the good stuff. So there's the prizes. Registration is still open. You've got until 12 o'clock tonight. So make sure you get your name in the hat. And don't forget, we've got the masterclasses and all of that stuff coming for you. We've got exclusive content only available for registrants of the jam. So for that alone, it's worth coming in and saying hello. Should we get to it? Should we just get to it? Before we do all the nitty gritty and all of the guidelines and all that stuff, let's just go ahead and do the theme announcement. So without further ado, I'm going to do a impromptu drum roll here. Here we go. And the theme is Blast from the Past. Reboot, remix, and reimagine. So what do we mean by this? So we all know games like Pac-Man and games from video history that could do with a breathe, a breath, I should say, of fresh air into their lungs of that format. And we wanted to make this accessible to absolutely everybody. So if there is a, an old game from your past that you fell in love with, think about how you could reboot and reimagine that for 2022. Could you do a Space Invaders with more hyper-casual artwork? I don't know how that would work. Probably don't want to do that. That's a rubbish idea, but you get my point. So we're going to go through here a little bit of a few helpful tips and tricks. Now, we're going to be available on Discord all throughout the game jam itself. I'm going to go through the agenda in just a minute. But I thought before we do that, we should just announce the theme and get that out of the way. So blast from the past, reboot, remix and reimagine. So I think now we should just probably do the timeline, actually. So let's do that. Um, we have got today, obviously we've started this on, uh, where are we? Here we go. Uh, where are we? We have got um, the timeline. So April 29th is when we open the doors. May 23rd, today the registration is closing. And obviously we're announcing the theme. June 22nd is when we're going to close off the registration. So you've got just short of a month to produce as many prototypes as you want 
and get your submissions in. We'll go through some of the guidelines, as I said, in just a moment to make it really clear from you, but we will be available on Discord throughout from this moment forward until the end of time, if I'm honest. So come and join us on the Discord. You will find a link in the description. Our glamorous team at Homer Games will paste you a link in the chat very shortly in case you missed it, but click on the Discord link. Make sure you come and join us there. That is completely free, as all of this is, of course. And you can talk to us there, and we'll be posting uh, some ad hoc live streams and all the information and answer any questions that you might have over on the Discord. And on July 29th, we will be closing the ceremony and announcing the winners. So there's a good four to five weeks after submission closing and that allows us to give us plenty of time to make sure we can test your games thoroughly and we need to do it in batches so everybody gets a fair crack of the whip so give us five weeks at least to do the testing it's slightly breathable that date but that is generally speaking when the theme uh, when the winners will be announced and of course if there's any change to that we will be communicating that to you but Overall, July 29th is when we're going to announce the winners. So blast from the past. Get your brain thinking about that right now. Um, we will be coming on doing some live streams, as I said. Uh, Aurelie already mentioned the Google Masterclasses that we're super excited to do. Um, we have got our own agenda lined up for you. So kicking off on May 25th, Wednesday coming, we have publishing lead Erwan here, and he's going to come on and talking about some of the prototyping best practices for you. So it'll be a stream much like this one, and we will be talking about all the best ways that you can do your prototypes, helpful tips and tricks to ensure that you're putting your best foot forward and maybe thinking about approaching the prototypes in a different way. He has a wealth of experience. We have world-class publishing managers here at Homer and I've twisted all of their arms and they're all going to come on and talk about game jammy stuff, hyper casual, prototyping, all of that good stuff. So on Friday we're joined with Arthur who's going to talk about game jams and prototyping. We have Pierre coming on and we're going to de deconstruct some games. If you've ever caught Academy Live then we are going to be doing that all throughout. So two live streams every single week. Can you believe it? Oleg is joining with me on the Friday. We have Game Creators with Katia. She's going to talk about how to create the best videos for your games. What are the tips and tricks to reduce CPI? That is going to be amazing. And that sort of time will be when you're thinking about creating videos or thinking about the videos for your prototypes. That is going to be epic. We have Augustine coming on for more game deconstructions. We have Luca and we have Ivan. So that's what's coming up. Two live streams every single week from the expert, the world-class publishing managers here at Homer Games. So you seriously really don't want to be uh, missing out on that. And as I said, we're kicking off on May 25, next Wednesday. No, that doesn't make sense. There's a typo there. There we go. Nothing like a bit of live. Uh, we, will, I, we will update this page. <laughs> this page will be available for you very shortly, but that will be starting next Wednesday, and we'll fix those dates up for you, and uh, you'll get a link to this page after the registration closes this evening. All right, so let's go back to some ideation tips and tricks here. Blast from the past. Let's have a look and see how we can figure this stuff out. So first tip, really, look to history for the video game. So look for old console games, the Atari 2600 or, you know, a Mega Drive or something. What sort of games are on there? Now, obviously, we're not asking you to create full-on console games, but is this parts of those sort of old titles that you enjoyed as a kid or what are the best parts of those games, right? We everything is a remix, but let's look to the past to reboot some of these and get inspired from these old, powerful, exciting games. You know, these are knockout, big hit games. What can we learn from those old ones 
and bring them into the hyper casual space. And it could just be that you do a vertical slice of those games. You know, there was a bit in X game that you you jumped up and did this, and maybe that in of itself you could expand that loop and make that into a prototype. So there's so much possibility here, it's unbelievable. And even going back to, you know, the old handheld things where they had no graphics to play with, but they were a lot of fun in their in their day. We also have YouTube and the App Store. So search YouTube for old video games. It's see it's kind of simple and yet obvious and yet super amazing so search for things like best ios games from 2010 so 12 years ago the app store's been around some of these old games from yesteryear back in 2012 13 14 15 etc some of those games were so popular for good reason because you know the devices were slightly lower in tech there was less graphics to play around with. So much like the really old console games, there was a lot of constraints that the early developers had and therefore they made their games super exciting with just really that solid core loop without any fancy graphics. So search YouTube for those old games. There's tons of compilations. We will be posting some links up in the Discord to help you out real quick. But honestly, you can just search YouTube um, and you'll come up with so many, it's unbelievable. And I looked at a few yesterday, and there's some games that I completely forgot about. And uh, one of those actually was Infinity Blade. I don't know. Give me a give me a heads up in that chat if anyone remembers Infinity Blade. I don't think anyone's done a hyper casual version of that. I think that could be pretty good. Um, you know, big boss fight every blooming every level. Pretty cool stuff. Then we have things like miniclip.com and what was it? Playclassic.games. I don't know if you've checked any of them out. Uh, back in the day, there was plenty of flash sites that um, obviously is obsolete now, but the old sites that you could visit for playing games in your browser, there's a lot of old games on there that haven't really been rebuilt for mobile. Now, you will find some that have been taken to mobile, clearly. Um, but they they started off on miniclip.com and play classic game. Oh, I always get that wrong. Play classic dot games. Um, go and check out those. See what you can reboot. You know, a lot of these games can. The core loop is so good, but they just haven't been reimagined or rebooted uh, for twenty twenty two. Rush to make our games live on time. Yeah, maybe. But there we go. So there's two other things, right? I did miss there, classic mobile first games. Well, that's kind of what I touched on on the Infinity Blade. But, you know, when we look uh, a few years back, the likes of Ketchup, who dominated the App Store that, you know, had a thousand games in the top 100, um, you can see some of their old games that are really, really solid and could be reboot rebooted for the jam this time around. They're right in front of you you know, liven up the graphics, make them less punitive because they were kind of ragey games back in the day. Uh, but there's certainly a lot of ideas to be had for mobile first games. Um, so you can do a search for, you know, uh, all of that as well. But Ketchup's a good place to start, maybe Boom Bit as well. Um, game screen, orientation and graphics. So I included this one because I a lot of the games, certainly the console games, will be landscape. And for hyper casual and casual that we're looking for, we don't really want landscape games. We want it to be portrait. But have a look at some of the games where even though they're landscape, you know, lock your phone device and turn it up the other way. And you'll find that all of a sudden you've got this landscape game that now goes up the screen that can really uh, yield some interesting results. So don't forget that. And obviously the older the games back in the day were a lot more 2D games out. So could you take a game that was traditionally th uh, 2D and change that to 3D graphics? You know, literally just not changing too much from the from the loop itself, but essentially taking a 2D game and 3D in it up. Uh, and that could be really, really powerful and relatively, I'm going to say easy, I don't mean it like that, but a kind of a almost a low-hanging fruit if you see a really popular old game you know, um, it's been done before, like they did with Pac-Man. I think they called it 
I want to say Pac Man 360. I'm probably wrong there, but they um, Namco actually uh, redid Pac Man into 3D, and that that was pretty. Uh, that was a pretty big hit for them back in the day as well. So plenty of options there, and you have a wealth of material to to draw upon when thinking about how you can get ideas for a new game from an old game, right? So I thought what I'd do real quick is give you an example, and this is probably the most obvious one and the most well-known one of recent years, which is Frogger from Konami back in the 80s. Um, and Hipster World turned Crossy Road at the end of 2014. They made Crossy Road from Frogger, right? So you can see on the left, you've got the Frogger, which is the 2D version. But the game is exactly the same. And I think this is a real classic example of how you can take an older game and reboot it into 2022. And Frogger is easy to make. What is up, Syntax? Good to see you in the chat. I can see the chat, by the way. I'm just trying to not get distracted like I normally do. So yeah, the uh, original Frogger, um, I, sad to say, that's nearly 40 years old now, which is insane. Uh, but yeah, back eight years ago, Hipster Whale created Crossy Road, and that was like the biggest hit. That was one of the major hits of the App Store ever. Obviously got turned into Disney franchises and all sorts of things, but it really does illustrate well exactly how you can take an old game, a 2D game, and turn it into a 3D version that looks more akin and more at home on the App Store today, even though uh, we don't see too much voxel graphics right now. But could you do some kind of version of this with the more of the, the hyper casual graphics that we see ruling the app store today food for thought so that was frogger and crossy road from 2014 but i thought just as we finish this section off to kind of boot it a little bit more up to date now you'll see pick me up here and pick me up 3d both tasty pill games released back uh, a few years ago and Hitting the top 10 in the last two weeks was the release from Voodoo called Deliver It 3D. And when you look at them side by side, you'll see it is very, very close. So the original Pick Me Up was a 2D game, and then Tasty Pill actually rebooted themselves and made a 3D version, and both did very well. And with a slight twist on the game sort of theme slash story, where they're not picking people up, but they're delivering stuff, you go from the original Pick Me Up to Deliver It 3D, and you can see the game is exactly the same. 2D to 3D, very new graphics, super, super delicious and juicy to play the new Voodoo one, and congrats to them because that's done very well for them. But yeah, that's a classic example. When you control the game, it's exactly the same. You could play it the same. <laughs> you know, the controls are the same. It's the same game just gone from 2D to 3D, rebooted for 2022. So I hope that gives you a few ideas of what we've got. We're going to cover more and more of this, like I said, over every week for the next two weeks, as well as some probably ad hoc streams and some Q&As if you've got any ideas or you want to reach out to us. Like I said, check out the chat uh, for the link to the Discord. Get yourself over there. And of course, head over to jam.homergames.com to register for all the content and get your name in the hat so you can produce potentially the next hit with us here. So let's go over some of the boring side of things, some guidelines. All your games at this time need to be created in Unity. Pretty standard and it probably won't be a surprise to you all, but obviously we need them all in Unity uh, for the jam. We're only accepting Android only for this jam, so all your exports need to be Android only. And of course, they need to be included, in, which needs to be included is Homer Belly. And that's the uh, our SDK, which includes Facebook and Google Analytics. It's a one hit SDK. All you're going to need to do is get a Facebook app ID and a Google Analytics ID, a ID via a token that we provide you. It's dead easy. If you've not tested with us before, um, you'll see how easy it is to run this through our online dashboard. And as you'd expect with our sponsor of Google, all the games need to be live on the Google Play Store so we can go ahead and test them uh, and run some ads for you.
via the home of dashboard like i said and last but not least for this one um, no ads in your games we don't want to run any get ads within your game so don't worry about that we just want to see the gameplay and you need to make sure you put the home of belly sdk in so we can do all the tracking and get all the numbers and run some ads for you so a few tips and tricks just before we start to do a quick recap here today really want to make sure we have a portrait orientation of the game we want to be able to hold the game in one hand right we don't want to be doing all of this that's why you see all the games the hyper casual games at the top of the charts all portrait resolution your game needs to be easy to understand you don't want to stray too far from the core loop take your references from the past but really boil it down into that one thing that you repeat over and over that makes it real good fun what made those games in the past so appealing and you know almost condense them purify it down to that that single action that you're doing and we need to when we run the videos we need to be able to see exactly what the game is all about within the first five seconds it's kind of the golden rule of hyper casual as we as we know it today concentrate on your core mechanic make sure it's polished right we want to make it fun but really spend time on like what is the essence of your game and is it fun it really really makes a difference all the ones that you see in the top of the charts they're actually pretty fun to play you could all make fancier graphics and have different colors but their, their loop is good and that's why people enjoy them keep your ui really minimal we don't need tons of buttons we don't need a seven page tutorial simple little tutorial with telling us how to play is perfect make that user experience really pulled back and strip away any of the unnecessary make sure there's no buttons on there that don't need to be just get us into the game as soon as you can a few simple buttons and we're good to go keep your sessions short 45 to 60 1 minute 15 is normally optimal short sharp snackable games so if you've got a level based game for instance you know keep those levels down to less than a minute ideally we really want to see as much gameplay as you can cram in for your prototypes but five to ten minutes of gameplay is perfectly fine for the prototypes and again if you've got any questions or you're a little bit unsure you can always send us a, a message over on the discord and we can definitely help you out there so if you haven't done already and i will remind you once again you do need to register for all of this at jam.homegames.com and of course visit us on the disc on the discord links are in the description and in that chat and there you go hybrid or idle type of games appropriate for the jam that's a great question um Mehmet, and i was just about to get to that um and of course we want to try and make sure you've got a bug free build as possible now we know there might be uh, a few little hiccups here and there but try and get all of those bugs ironed out it makes so much difference um and yes the theme uh, the theme of blast from the past encompasses all genres this time around surprise us we all know that something fresh to the market normally works best so there's no restrictions on any theme or genre we want to we want you to explore and surprise us and see what you can come up with there's very little we want to put any restraints on anybody this time around show us what you got what if we what if we plan to make idle arcade well if you plan to make an idle arcade um that obviously isn't too relevant you want to um you want to continue uh in the way that you normally would with the idle arcade um we will if you post on the discord with specific questions we will have jules come on who is literally the world lean next poet on Idol Arcade. Um, we will bring him on and we'll talk about Idol Arcade. But obviously, short session times. For, for Idol Arcade, you really want to try and make sure your play time is up and make it engaging. And again, make that core loop super juicy and exciting to play um, and all of that good stuff. There we go. Just replied in the chat and saved me doing it. So I hope that makes sense. So before we wrap up today, we don't want to over egg this i want to remind you of all the cool stuff we've got going on we of course we have the agenda here with all of the live streams coming up which you can only access if you register two a week plus there's some additional ones coming up as well we have 
Registration closing tonight, 11.59. And the prize is, top prize, 50-50 rev share. Come on now. What are you going to do? No brainer alert. Um, it's worth it just for that alone. And of course, as we mentioned right at the beginning, we want to reward you for every step of the process here. Let's go and get best game ideas, Homer's Choice Awards, best market CPI, Founders Award, best overall metrics, and the standout award. So there's not much else for me to say at this point. A little bit of a different stream because obviously we wanted to open up and let you know what the plan is. Join me live on Wednesday. That date was right. I think I just totally derped out there. Let's have a look at that again. Where is that? Wednesday the 25th. Yeah, I am a potato. It's official. So Wednesday the 25th, I will be back on the channel with Erman talking about prototype best practice is Best practices, that's not easy to say. English is hard. So join with me on Wednesday. You will get a link after you join today, or if you've already joined, you will get an email starting tomorrow. And that will give you access to the platform where you can go through and submit your games. Everything's documented there. It's our tried and tested dashboard, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. We have full documentation. Any problems, we will be there to help you out on Discord. But you will get an you will get a link and access to all the live streams coming up. Now, if you don't get your email, don't panic. We will batch them out a little bit because there's a lot of people to send emails to. So it might be slightly later in the day or even on Wednesday morning. Don't panic. If you haven't received your email by 4 p.m. CET on Wednesday, hit us up on Discord and we'll figure out what's going on. But you'll get instant access from that email to create your account and you'll see all the cool stuff we have over there inside Homer Labs for you and of course access to all these live streams and some previous streams and some details on some ideas that we'll be putting together and loads and loads of good stuff. Where can we get the Belly SDK? That will be inside Homer Lab. There's a link there. So obviously we have the very latest version uh, constantly updated for you. So you can get the Homer Belly SDK when you get access to Homer Lab and then you can install that and jobs are good. In. Hope that makes sense. All right. Any questions that we can answer before I say goodbye today? Not really set up for the Q&A like we normally do on Fridays. But we can do a couple more minutes in case I've missed anything. I can see Valentin there, the glamorous Valentin in the chat answering some questions. So without further ado, I might go and wind that up. Don't forget to come and visit jam.homergames.com and get your names in that hat. Do games need audio? Uh, they don't need audio, but as with everything, I think some small audio would really add to the production value of your game. Um, so I would say if you can, if it's relevant and it seems appropriate, you should add a little bit of audio in your game, yeah. On the submissions, will we have to send the... GDD. I don't actually know what that means. What is up, Jason? Good to see you here, Mr. Jason. Love it. What is up, dude? Uh, I don't know what GDD is, so apologies for derping out on that. Game design document. I see. Sorry. Um, no, you do not need to make a game design document. Far from it. I wouldn't bother. Um, not for hyper casual. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Sorry. It's uh, difficult for me. I didn't get it. I know. I'm the only one in the whole YouTube that doesn't know what that meant, so apologies for that. Um, but yeah, don't worry about that. We're just interested in your prototypes. Um, and like I said, we'll be around on the Discord um, to answer any questions you may have uh, and feel free to reach out to me and we'll try and hook you up if we're missing anything. Okay, with all that said and done, that is going to go and wrap it up for me today. Come and join me Wednesday. Email will be in your inbox coming shortly. If you've not had one, Please don't email me in five minutes saying we don't have it. Emails will go out starting tomorrow. Um, I, we don't foresee any problems, but there might be a slight delay. So keep an eye on your inbox, check your spam folders, all of that good stuff. And if you haven't registered, oh my goodness, I don't know what you're doing, but you need to register right now before 12 o'clock because we're shutting the doors and that'll be it. And you'll miss out on all this stuff. 
and you won't have a chance of winning the prizes. And quite frankly, if you've ever wanted to build a game, now is the perfect opportunity to put your best foot forward and make yourself build a game because you'll be in the chance, even for an idea, you could win some money and hey, you could do a lot with that. So that is going to wrap it up for me for now. Thank you everybody for joining with me today. I hope that was all clear. I am super pumped for this. I know you're going to create some excellent, awesome prototypes. The team is can't wait to see what you're going to cook up. It's going to be a good one. And with all that said, that is going to do it for me. So remember, Jilly, games don't make themselves. I will see you on Wednesday and see you later, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.